Queen Elizabeth II has died aged 96. Prince Charles becomes king. He's chosen the name Charles III. He did have the choice. Uh, flags are flying at half-mast and bells have tolled at the cathedrals and at King's Chapel. A gun salute will be held tomorrow at 10 o'clock at the naval base. Of course, with the Queen's death comes Prince Charles being king. A proclamation parade for the new king will also take place with a second gun salute from Devil's Gap. We have had a bit of a scare. We had a bit of a scare earlier this year when she began suffering from mobility issues and we saw Prince Charles then opening Parliament. Today has been more worrying. Her closest family was at Balmoral and the royal doctors said they were very concerned. This kind of statement, of course, from the palace was very unusual. We normally hear very little of the Queen's medical matters, which are seen as private. So joining us to tell us a bit more, our first guest of the evening is former Chief Minister, Minister for, um, for an Investment, Sir Joe Osano. Thank you for joining us this evening. Sir so Joe, what do you think this means? Look, this is another... For the, for the world in which we live, this is another uh, stable element that is dis disappearing, right? I think for Gibraltar, there's been a special relationship with Her Majesty. Remember that um, a visit to us triggered the first uh, sanctions by Spain. And every single Gibraltarian celebrated the fact that she came, notwithstanding the sanctions and continue to celebrate it forever more, and we always said, we want you to come back. Right? There's footage of, of actually a, a queue at the frontier. The, the first, there, were, there weren't that many cars, but there was a queue at the frontier Absolutely. after her visit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I think another important thing that, that, that uh, links us to the, the British Crown in a particular way, I think they've always had a special place in their hearts for us because of the closeness geographically, you know, we are the first, the nearest colony to, to, to the homeland, to the centre of the empire as it was. But in fact, the 2006 constitution um, placed her in a role as our head of state in Gibraltar. So the government of Gibraltar is Her Majesty and the ministers. And the governor in the constitution uh, represents her with the minister as the government. So uh, she's always been our head of state as a colony, and she's now a head of state in, a, in addition to the fact that she is, because she's the head of state of the UK, in our own right, in our constitution in 2006. And that we're the only colony that has that situation. All the others stayed with a, with a former relationship. And, and therefore, she's been an example, I think, of what good government is. To the world, right? She proved to be an exceptional person at a very young age when, you know, I mean, when I was a refugee in London during the air raid, she was going around driving uh, for the forces, right? As a, as, a, as a young lady. And then, of course, the, the sudden death of her father found her in Kenya and having to come back and take up the crown. Uh, unexpectedly, not having been already prepared for that, not expecting it to happen, right? So she's shown an ability to take on challenges right from a very young age and kept that ability throughout her life and an example to the head of state of almost every other country in the world. I think it will be very difficult for her son to make that kind of impact on the Commonwealth and on the British people. Uh, it is, and, and, you know, in spite of her being there, you've had uh, people like Barbados saying they're going to be a republic in the Commonwealth. There's more likely that, that others will go if she's not there, I think. And I also think that... And what the, effect do you think that this losing this stability, this constant that, that you speak about, what effect do you have? You just mentioned Barbados and, and the Commonwealth. Well... In a way, there's nothing wrong with people wanting to be a republic if that is what the, what the people want, right? Indeed, if the United Kingdom people decided that they didn't want to have a monarchy, and, uh, uh, we, we believe in democracy, so we believe it's the right thing to do. And that could happen with, and her, that could happen. with her going. Yeah, yeah, yeah could happen. And, and I can understand the argument intellectually for, as a democratic thing, but, but, but uh, 
I think mo I and most importantly emotionally feel that there is something to the queen and to the monarchy that is not the same, you know? I mean, okay, so you can elect who you want and you can finish up with Trump, right? And, and, and therefore the, the, the stability that she's brought to the United Kingdom and, and the fact that the British people are on, on whatever else other they may be divided on her yeah. uh, reigning of uh, the, the United, as we are. I don't think there's ever been the, anybody here, even if, if they, anybody that's even wanted to be independent, and there are very few, would never have thought of being independent, but not under the Queen. The, the UK not in its best position at the moment, um, after Brexit, after Covid, so this will really have an impact, even more so. Well, anything that, that creates less stability in a global economy like the one we have today, means that poor people who might have invested will not invest. It doesn't mean that the investment disappears, but it makes people more cautious. So people say, well, look, if there's a change of government, I want to see what the government happens. If there's a change in the head of state after 70 years, let's see how the new guy go, will perform and let's see what sort of problems. If there's a lot of industrial unrest, will the industrial will get worse because the queen is not there? So the, in terms of the United Kingdom uh, impact globally and the economy and the value of the pound, uh, all those things, because I mean, the most important thing is that we've lost a, an incredible human being, a, a woman that, uh, I mean, you know, when you think of, of the, the mantra of today's civilization, the importance that there should be equal opportunities for women, you know, and that women should be able to participate and, and be in, uh, as equals with men. Well, look, the reality is that in terms of the British monarchy, the monarchs that have made most impact and we remember most were all women. Elizabeth I, Queen Victoria, and Elizabeth II. <laughs> so, Joe, National Day celebrations, yeah. were we, we can't... The, There's nothing can't, to celebrate. We can't celebrate now. How can we be celebrating on Saturday? But fitting, perhaps, that she's died as the Union Jack flies alongside our flag. Well, we would not have wanted her to die. We would have wanted her to be there much longer. But of course, look, I'm going to be 83. I've been 83 this year. You, you know, you have to face the reality that... You don't look a day over 60. Oh, I thought you were going to say 16. <laughs> no, 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 not quite. <laughs> but, uh, and people, I mean, you've seen her, you know, ageing in the sense that of being less. And I think the loss of her husband had a, a clear impact of, on her, you know, been married for 73 years. So uh, we, have, we have lost something in, in our lives and in our st social structures that is really irreplaceable. And the replacement, you know, we have the loyalty to the monarchy, we have the loyalty to the king. I mean, I was uh, uh, knighted by, by, by the new king. Uh, but the, the, she cannot be replaced as she was, what, what she meant and what she meant to people, right? And I think if it weakens the UK economically for a while, not indefinitely, but certainly for a while, it comes at a bad time when the pound is, you know, at its lowest for a very long time against the dollar and anything else like that means. And of course, if, remember, the, the biggest problem every country in the world is facing now is inflation. There are many factors in inflation. But the loss of value of the pound makes the inflation worse. So, you know, I mean, if, we, if the pound uh, is worth less, Against the euro, what we buy in Spain becomes more expensive. What we import from the rest of the world becomes more expensive. So to the extent that there is an economic cost, the cost will be negative, and, but it will not be there forever, and it will be nothing as bad as what is already there. It will just make what is already there slightly worse. So, Joe, we also have to remember she wasn't just a head of state. She was a mother, she was a grandmother, and she had her great-grandchildren how will you remember her very briefly, just to end this interview? Look, I remember her as somebody that, that uh, came to Gibraltar when I was 15. And, and that was in London, in the air raids, when I was uh, there in, 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 in uh, West London. 
and somebody that has always been in the life, in my life as a politician and in the life of the Gibraltarians, and we are, look, the, the land that we call ours is crown land. The crown is closer to the people in Gibraltar than I think uh, in, that the, than it is to some areas in the UK, and certainly closer than, than any of the overseas territory who, who are in, too far away to identify with the, the British government in the way we have done. And I think the fact that, that her life has been an example of what a devoted leader put in the, the priority, uh, even above the family, to the people, mm -hmm. uh, is, is the, most thing, the most thing we need to remember her for, as so, a dedication and a devotion to us.